well, friends, I once again find myself in the very privileged position of being allowed to wander free inside of a Broadway theater. Today, I'm in the New Amsterdam Theater. I'm under the, under the auditorium in this uh, lounge rotunda place that's underneath here. Look at this incredible, 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 incredible theater. Why, Billy, why the hell are you here? Uh, because on Monday and Tuesday, we will be doing our Broadway Cares, Equity Fights, AIDS uh, annual Red Bucket Follies show. So, of course, Back to the Future is performing, and of course, I ended up writing it with a lot of assistance and a lot of help. Uh, this theater was where the Ziegfeld Follies played. Now, look at this is in a display case over here. That is just part of what is in this incredible theater. This is from Peacock Feather Costume for the Ziegfeld Follies in 1921. When Disney took over this theater, the renovation they did the restoration, every square inch. This is lower lobby, but look at the detailing of this. When they took this place over, it had been, I'm doing a video for my people. This is the famous Jelani Remy, everybody. He's one of the ghosts of the new Amsterdam. He actually is in charge of our skit and killing it for us. I'm the old Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on Dan. Um, uh, this had been a beautiful place and it fell apart. It was dilapidated. Uh, look at this. Look, this is just one of the sconces. Come on. When Disney took it over, it was so dilapidated. Holes in the ceiling. Oh, there's a show rehearsing their tech upstairs, so I'm not about to hear me. Um, but even look, look, just look at that staircase. Look at this. Anyway, it was so dilapidated. Trees were growing in the orchestra pit from holes in the roof and rainwater, and they took it over and did this astounding renovation of this space. So I'm not gonna do much of a big tour of it, but we just got done being on stage. What a privilege. So here's, yeah, here's part of the auditorium. Look at this. This is where uh, Aladdin plays now. And, uh, Oh, here's the, this is at the back of the auditorium. There's another gorgeous, gorgeous anteroom at the back of the theater. More Ziegfeld Follies, paraphernalia, memorabilia. Ah, uh, come on. So anyway, yeah, Disney—they own this house. Uh, and here's the story. Oh, look at some of this stuff. God, I'm, I'm, it's so half a story for you. Okay, okay. They took this theater. They own it. And the, the, the deal was, if you own this theater, you have to always have a show playing in it or be cleaning it, renovating it to put one of your shows in it, which is why Lion King opened it. Then they moved Lion King to the Minskoff so they could put Mary Poppins in here. When Mary Poppins wrapped up, Aladdin came in here. And you know they have a pipeline a mile deep of what comes next when Aladdin starts to go down. So they've got to have, oh my God, Fanny Bryce. So that is the deal with this particular theater. And here's something else I'm gonna tell you. This theater has ghosts. The most famous one being Olive. She's been seen a lot here. She was a Ziegfeld showgirl. She can be seen walking across the stage draped in pearls. She's been seen a lot. I've never met Olive. I know that they put her picture at the stage door entrances so people can come in and say, hello, Olive, because this is her house. There's another sconce. So anyways, that's, look it up for yourselves. I, I'm, I'm really not doing any of this justice, but I gotta get out of people's way and get out of here. But I just, the fact that I'm allowed to just wander through this gorgeous, that you can't even see, environment in this incredible house and be part of this Broadway event with my community is just, what a gift. All right, I'm off like a prom dress. Okay, bye.